Welcome to the Indie Dev channel, where I document some of the lessons I'm learning while building my own indie apps. I'm finally working on building my very first application, a simple workout tracker that focuses on starting slow and building up progress. When I started working on the wireframe for the app, every time I got an idea about a page or functionality that might be included in the app, I immediately started sketching it, zooming in on it, sketched it in different mediums, in my sketchbook, in good notes, an app on the iPad, in Procreate, and even on random pieces of paper. So I ended up with a bunch of incoherent sketches across different mediums. I made a mess and I felt a bit stuck, but eventually I managed to create a decent enough wireframe and I came out from the experience with three main lessons that I want to share with you in this video. I also want to wrap things up at the end of the video with a suggested seven step workflow that I will try to follow next time I work on making a wireframe. If you don't know what a wireframe is, wireframe is the structure of an app. It's a cheap and quick way to iterate, to edit your idea over and over, each time making it a little bit better, using simple shapes to describe the elements that will be in your app, the pages, the user flows, while also removing the overhead of thinking about style, like color typography, and spacing between elements, and focusing on the structure and the functionality of the app. And then when you've got a solid structure for your app, you can build your UI design on top of it. The first mistake that I made when I started working on the wireframe is zooming in on any page of the application that popped into my head and starting to iterate and edit this page, even though this page might not be important. Not all pages are equal. So first define the core of the app, the most important action of the application, the most important page of the app, zoom in on the core, edit it over and over, each time making it a bit better, and then you can build the rest of the pages of the application around this core page. So in my app, for example, the options page is not as important as the create a new workout page, which is the core page of the app, the most important page in the app. If we look at the YouTube app, for example, the home page or the feed page is the most important page of the app. While other pages might be important, they are not as important as the core page. In Google Keep, creating or editing a note is the most important page of the app. Sketching the big picture is the thing that got me unstuck while working on the wireframe of the app. By the big picture, I mean drawing all the pages of the application in one large piece of paper. Once I started working on the big picture, the wireframe process became smooth and even enjoyable. I literally felt unstuck. But if you're not sure what pages will be in your app, you can start by writing a list of features and pages that might be in your application, then filter these to find the essential ones. And the third main lesson is don't make a mess. So here are three things that helped me get out of the mess I made while working on the wireframe. The first is sticking to one medium. Having parts of the wireframe scattered across different mediums wasted my time and made me feel lost and stuck. I found that using a large piece of paper is perfect for drawing the big picture. I also found that using a sketchbook makes me feel a bit more creative and it's also more flexible and portable than the iPad. So I'll think that I will start the initial sketch of the core page inside the sketchbook. But I have chosen good notes as my final wireframe medium as I found it to be the fastest way to edit. I can resize elements and pages to fit into one page. I can make selections, duplicate things, move things around, change colors, highlight text, erase parts of the sketch, add new pages and more. So to avoid making a mess, stick to one medium. While I was working on the wireframe, I got bombarded with ideas related to the application, but not to the wireframe itself. And I started sketching these ideas and taking notes on the same pages as the wireframe. Out of place notes confuse and cause bloat, and they are unlikely to be usable later if they are scattered across random pages. The solution is one page to capture them all. Get them out of your head quickly. Do not ignore them as they will linger in your head and distract you. Stay focused and keep your wireframe pages clean. Later on, when you're working on a logo for the app, for example, you can 
extract the logo-related notes and sketches from this one page. It's quite tempting, especially in good notes, but also with other mediums, to keep starting new pages each time you get a new idea, which is exactly what I did, and I ended up with an unnecessarily bloated file with endless pages. Having no limits on the amount of pages that you use will cause you to use more pages than necessary, and this will confuse you and waste your time. To avoid this problem, next time I work on a wireframe, I will use a minimal amount of pages. About three pages to be specific. I will sketch and edit the core page in one page, and another page for the big picture, and finally a third page to capture related ideas. So let's wrap things up with a seven-step workflow to create a wireframe. Before we start, I want to say that I'm not an expert, I'm just sharing my experience building my very first wireframe, and I'm sure that this workflow will be updated in the future. So I will start by just choosing a couple of references, preferably real-life applications or websites, and I will install these or have them open in my browser tabs. I'll have a look at them before I start working on the wireframe, just to get an overall idea of what they are doing. And I will also get back to them when I'm stuck thinking about functionality in the application that I'm working on. So using a reference will save you time and it will also keep you from coming up with a user interface that is too strange for people, where people have to relearn things that they already know how to do, which might result in a bad user experience. Next, I will start working on creating a list of every feature that might make it into the application. Then I will start filtering these features to find the essential ones, the essential features and the essential pages of the application. I'm not going to try to implement every single feature that comes into my head. I will just try to find the essential ones and the features that should make it to the first version of this application. Then later on, when I start getting feedback, I can start adding or removing features to the app. Next, I will define the core of the application, the most important action of the app, the main reason this app is created, define the core user flow and the core page of the application. Now I might move back and forth between step three and step four. Next I will start by sketching the core page in my sketchbook and I will start editing this page. I'll then move it into good notes and I will continue to edit it there. I'll give it its own full page, I'll zoom in on it. I will give it more attention than any of the other pages. After that, I will grab a large piece of paper, and I will start sketching the big picture using the filtered pages that I defined earlier. I will start editing, I will move it into good notes, and I will continue to edit it there. Finally, the moment I start getting other ideas, ideas that are related to the app, but not to the wireframe, I'm just going to create a new page in good notes, and I will capture these ideas there. So these were three lessons that I learned from the mistakes I made while working on my first wireframe and a suggested workflow. When you're done with the wireframe, the next step is to build your user interface design using it. I made a video documenting how I designed a part of this wireframe, specifically the fab, floating action button, a material design three component. And I used the material three design kit to do it. It includes a step-by-step -step tutorial and it could be a good intro to using the material design three Figma kit to design your application. I also have a playlist where I've been exploring Figma with many tutorials and projects that you can use to learn how to use Figma. I will continue to document my process for building my very first application, so stay tuned if you find this interesting.